dear brothers and sisters, my name is Antoinette and today I wanted to share something very interesting about Halloween. So Halloween basically means uh, the eve before All Souls Day, All Saints Day or All Hallows Day. And this festival dates back to the ancient times of the Celtic festival. It's a pagan origin and uh, we know that the Christian church kind of twisted it and brought it into like a pagan Christian religion just to get more converts into the Christian uh, church of those days. And I don't want to go much into the history, but this is just a basic um, introduction you can say for Halloween. Halloween celebrates death, fear and darkness. So on the contrary, we see that we as Christians, we are called to be the light of the world. Yeah, we celebrate life in Jesus and we have nothing to do with darkness. We have nothing to do with fear. The Bible says that we are the light of the world. Yeah, and God created us in the image of himself. This is what we represent. We represent his own image. And we understand that there is no place for light to compromise with darkness. And there is no way that the image of God would represent something so evil and something so dark, right? We are called to represent God. We are made in His own image. And we have been given not the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, love and a sound mind. Listen up, guys. People dressed up like demons and try to scare others. The spirit of fear is a real evil spirit. Why would you bring fear onto others by scaring them? We do not have a spirit of fear, but we have the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us because we are the temple of God. Let me just read to you some verses based on everything I just said. Matthew five fourteen says, You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. And Genesis 1.27 says, So God created human beings in His own image. In the image of God, He created them male and female. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of timidity, of power, love, and a sound mind of self-discipline. 1 Corinthians 6.19-20 says, Have you forgotten that your body is now the sacred temple of the spirit of holiness? who lives in you. You don't belong to yourself any longer for the gift of God, the Holy Spirit lives inside your sanctuary. You were God's expensive purchase paid with the tears of blood, the blood of Jesus basically. Use your body to bring glory to God. So we have to use our body to glorify God. Yesterday I was praying and I asked the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, use my ears to hear your word, use my mouth to preach your gospel, use my hand to do work for your kingdom and use my legs to walk in the path that you want me to walk to preach the gospel. Use this entire vessel. Yeah, so literally your body is a temple of God. We don't want to glorify idols. We don't want to dress up the temple of God into demons. No, I don't think so. We see in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 11 and it says, Take no part in worthless deeds of evil and darkness, instead expose them. It does not say, let's compromise, let's try to fit into this festival, it's not a big deal. But the Bible says, take no part, absolutely nothing. Do not even be involved in it. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them, which is what I'm currently doing now. I'm exposing that this is a scheme of the devil to create open doors into your lives when you celebrate evil, when you dress up as a demon, you change your identity, right? Which is supposed to be the image of God, the temple of God, the light of the world. Right? And it says in 2 Corinthians 2.11 So that Satan will not outsmart us for we are familiar with his evil schemes. 
If you know that Halloween is bad, tell your friends. Expose the enemy. Tell them about the schemes of the devil and what the devil is trying to do. Yeah? So they will be aware of it and they will not go into danger unaware, right? Another thing about Halloween is that peop it's, it, it's completely okay to remember the dead, to have the memory of them, to respect them, to even go to their graves and to, to you know, share a moment over there thinking about them and, you know, because you miss them, obviously. It's, it's totally cool, but this is where you need to draw the line. Praying to the dead, number one. Why would you pray to the dead? We do not receive guidance from the dead, but guidance from God. We are not supposed to pray to the dead saints. We, ha we are not supposed to have anything to do with the dead because that displeases the Lord. And that's in the Bible. I'm going to read those verses to you. So the second thing that is weird is when people pray for the dead. Why would you pray for the dead? When a person dies, you either go to heaven or you go to hell, right? There's no place in between, as some people believe that there is a place between heaven and hell called purgatory, where you are purified and then you go to heaven, which is not biblical. Bible doesn't support it. You know why? Jesus said on the cross, Jesus said, it is finished. It is finished. The blood of Jesus purifies you and you're white as snow. But when you die, you go to be with the Lord. Jesus never said on the cross to be continued in purgatory. Jesus said, it is finished. Right, so praying to the dead is again weird. Praying for the dead is again not biblical. Let's look at some verses, guys. Come on, okay. Do not let your people practice fortune telling or sorcery, interpret omens or engage in witchcraft or cast spells or function as mediums or psychics or call forth the spirits of the dead. But you must be blameless before the Lord your God. Deuteronomy 18, 10 to 11 and 13. It says, do not call forth the spirits of the dead. Leviticus 26 says, I will also turn against those who commit spiritual prostitution by putting their trust in mediums or in those who consult the spirits of the dead. I will cut them off from the community. Isaiah 8 verse 16 says, Someone may say to you, let's ask the mediums and those who consult the spirits of the dead. With their whispering and mutterings, they will tell us what to do. But shouldn't? People ask God for guidance. Should the living seek guidance from the dead? Wow. Second Chronicles 33 verse 6 says, Man is sir, the guy. He practiced sorcery, divination, witchcraft, and he consulted with mediums and psychics. He did much that was evil in the Lord's sight, arousing his anger. We have Acts chapter 19 verse 19, and it says, A number of them who had been practicing sorcery, brought the incantation books and burned them at a public bonfire. The value of the books was several million dollars. Wow. So this is the NLT. And then you have Acts chapter 8, where we see interaction between Simon the sorcerer and Peter. You could go and read that. So praying to the dead, praying for the dead is not biblical and is not meant to be done. So remember that. You need to ask the Holy Spirit, am I, am, let the Holy Spirit speak to you. If this festival is convicting you in your heart, don't do it, right? Don't do it. Let's not open any doors to the devil. Let's be aware of his strategies in these last days. Let's focus on the Word of God and let's not compromise with the truth, okay? The only thing that we are going to be wearing in this Halloween is the armor of God, right? So Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 20, I'm going to read just 10 to 13. It says, a final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are 
not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty works in, dark, in the dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. So always remember to ask the Holy Spirit and let Him lead you in the ways of the truth, right? If there's anybody over here who's new and who doesn't know Jesus, I want to tell you something. I want to tell you that God loves you. And God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him will not perish but have eternal life. Jesus said that He came to give us life and abundant life, right? But what happened? Sin separated us from God. And the Bible says that all of us have sinned. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. The punishment of sin is death. And death not just in the physical, but death in the eternal death which means the separation of God eternally, right? But Jesus did something awesome. Jesus died on that cross. He demonstrated His love in such a way that He died on that cross while we were yet sinners. Jesus died in our place. He took the penalty of our sins upon Him, right? He paid the price for our sins so that we can be back in a relationship with God and live eternally with God forever. But guess what? Jesus not only died, but the scripture says on the third day He rose again and He resurrected and He seated at the right hand of the Father and He ascended to heaven and He's coming back again. The Bible also says that Jesus is the only way. He said that I, He is the way, the truth and the life and no man can come to the Father but through Jesus. If you want to receive this Jesus today, if you want to ask Jesus to forgive your sins, all you have to do is believe that He died and He resurrected to save you. Believe that He's your Savior. Believe in Jesus, that He's your Lord. Accept that you are a sinner and confess your sins to Jesus and ask Him to forgive you for your sins. Repent of your sins. Turn away from your sins and look at Jesus and He's going to forgive you for all your sins. You're going to be back united with God again. If, you're, if you have made this decision today, I want you to go and speak to Jesus in a quiet place. Get a Bible and get, get into a good church. Stay around some good Bible friends who know Jesus. And let me know in the comments below. So if anybody comes on your door knocking on Halloween, just open the door and just preach the gospel to whoever knocks on your door. Praise Jesus. To Jesus be all the glory forever and ever. Come Lord Jesus. Bless your people Lord. In Jesus name. Amen. Bye guys.